Hey you guys, welcome back to the studio. My name is Ed, I'm an artist here in Venice, Florida. And today we're gonna to talk about um, a principle of art that has been uh, served as a real challenge for artists throughout the centuries. And that's the principle of creating space or the illusion of depth in your drawings. Now in our last video, we talked about this and we showed how through the use of shading, you can really give an object three dimensionality or that illusion of space. Well, today we're gonna to talk about a different technique and that's the technique of one point perspective. Now, for some of us, you'll look at it and it looks a little bit intimidating, but I'm telling you, stick with me through this video and you'll see it's a lot simpler than you might realize. So why don't you grab yourself a piece of paper, a pencil, sit back, relax, and we'll get started. Thank you. Okay, so today we're gonna to learn how to create a one point perspective drawing. Now, before we do that, I'm gonna show you a painting in which this artist uses one point perspective. And we're gonna look at this painting together. We're gonna to kind of pull it apart and figure it out and see how this artist created this illusion of depth. Okay, we're gonna see that there's really only three ingredients that you need to create this one point perspective drawing. And after we find out what those three things are, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to use those, how to put those things together to create your own one point perspective drawing. Okay, so let's take a look at this painting and we'll figure it out together. Okay guys, so let's take a look at this painting here. Um, we have a little, it's actually a little bit, a little strange painting, but it really demonstrates one point perspective very well. And we can see that these buildings and the landscaping really have a great sense of depth of that space. So let's take a look really what's going on here and try to figure out if we can, how this artist created that illusion. Now, I think one thing we'll notice, I'm gonna take my ruler here. And what I would like to do is lay this ruler along these lines here, these lines, the side of the building that actually goes into the distance. Let's just line that up and we'll see. I'm having, okay, right there. So you'll see if I let, put my ruler along that line, if I actually draw a line here and then extend it past the building, the line continues on, right? So let's do that with all the lines that look like they're going into the distance and see if we can't figure out what's going on here. So let's take a look. The bottom of the building is also doing that same thing. So let's draw this line. And we see that that line goes to the same point as that line is doing. Right, we can do that even with the windows here. We follow that line. Goes to that same point. Even these hedges. Let's let's take a look at the bottom of these hedges here. Right, and we draw a line. They go to the same spot. Even the hedges along this side. Let's lay our ruler along like along that line. Right? We see the same thing happening. What about this street, this little road here? I can even put out a ruler right along that edge. Okay, so we're starting to see a pattern here. So what's going on? So let's take a look at that. We can see what we have here. These are actually called lines of convergence. Okay, makes sense. 
they're all converging at one point. So that's one ingredient that we need in our drawings, a line of convergence. The other thing you'll notice, all these lines, not only do they converge together, but they go to the same point, this point here. They all go to one point, hence one point perspective. So this point right here in art terms is called the vanishing point. That's where everything seems to vanish. It all comes together right there and you can barely see anything, right? So if, if you know, these people, see the people get smaller and smaller as they go into the distance. So eventually you go to that one point, they vanish. That's the vanishing point, right? The building, it, get, it would get smaller and smaller and smaller until it got to that point, it vanishes. So we have lines of convergence, one ingredient. We have a vanishing point, second ingredient. And the third ingredient, we can see or not see, it's, uh, it would be called the horizon line. So um, in this painting, we right, right between where the land and the sky meet, this is called the horizon line, right? And we can see that when we go to the beach and you sit and you look out at the water, that line between the sky and the water, that's the horizon line. So we need that. Now, not every drawing are you gonna see, the, you don't have to see that horizon line, but we need it there because that horizon line is number one, it's our vanishing point, has to be on that line. And that vanishing point is really the perspective that the viewer has of the drawing. So as the artist, you can either raise that horizon line up or you can lower it down to change the perspective of how this, uh, of how the viewer looks at your drawing. And later on, I'll show you a couple examples of a high horizon line or a low horizon line. Okay. but. For now, just understand, we need a horizon line, a vanishing point, and lines of convergence. Okay, now what I'd like to do is get, I'm gonna get a pad of paper and a pencil, and we're gonna do this together. We'll go through it step by step. There's just these three ingredients, and we'll create our own drawing, okay? So let me get a pad, and, uh, and I'll show that to you. Okay, guys, so we have our pen and um, our pencil. One other thing we're gonna need is a ruler um, and an eraser. Okay, so if you don't have those things, hit the pause button, go get them, come back, and we'll get started. So the first thing that we need is the uh, horizon line. Okay, so we have those three ingredients. So the horizon line, we're gonna draw in first. The only requirement with the horizon line is that it's horizontal, okay? But now you can make it low on your paper, you can make it high on your paper, but um, for now, until we learn, we're just gonna put it right across the middle. Okay, so we draw a line, we have our horizon line. This is the sky and the ground, okay? So far, so good. You guys are doing great. So the second ingredient is a vanishing point. Now that point, the only rule with the vanishing point is that it has to be on that horizon line. So it could be anywhere. It could be in the middle. It could be to the left, to the right. It doesn't matter as long as it's somewhere on the line. So for this drawing, Let's just put it right in the middle. We're gonna make things as simple as possible. And that's it. Now that dot, we'll erase it later on. But our vanishing point, our horizon line, that's two of the three ingredients. We're doing great. Okay, so now lines of convergence. Now before we make the lines of convergence, we're gonna just draw a simple box. Okay, so somewhere over here, if 
But now let's keep it below the horizon line. Just take your ruler and just, you know, make for yourself a box. Okay, great. So for now, what we have here, we have a flat box, not much depth to this drawing whatsoever. So what we need are those lines of convergence, and that's what's going to really give us our, our three-dimensionality. So let's start here. Let's take this corner of the square and just line up your ruler with that corner and the vanishing point. Okay, and we draw a line to the vanishing point. Okay, now let's move to this corner. And just once again, line up your ruler with that corner and with the vanishing point and draw a line. Okay, now we're gonna move over to this corner. So the top right corner, once again, line up the ruler and the vanishing point. Make your line. Okay, now what we have here is a box that looks like it's three miles long. All right, it's a really long box. It's good, we got that depth, but how do we shorten that up now? How do we shorten this up? It's really quite simple. So this is the front of the box. All we have to do, we can make a long box or a short box. We're gonna take a line that's parallel to the front of the box and draw another line here, right? Now we know if you have a box, the front of the box and the back of the box, those lines are gonna be parallel, right? The top front is parallel with the top back. So that's all we're doing. We're just Okay, and now the rear of the top of the box is going to be parallel to the front of the box. So we just line that up with the end of the box here, draw a line. And this is our box. What we can do now is go ahead and just erase these lines. Okay, and there you have a box that is drawn in one point perspective. Okay, that's great. So that's below the horizon line. Let's do one more. We'll see what it looks like if it was above the horizon line. All right, so try for yourself again. We'll draw another box up here. It could even be a rectangle. Square could be a triangle, but we'll for now we'll just focus on a square. So we right now you see the square is really looking pretty flat. So we need those lines of convergence. So now let's start at this corner up here and just connect your ruler from that corner to the vanishing point. And draw your line. Okay, now we'll move to this corner. And draw the next line. Okay, and now the last corner, just put your pencil there. This is the bottom right corner. Connect the pencil and the vanishing point. Draw your line. And there you have it. So once again, we have a great box. It's five miles long, so we're going to shorten it up again. Remember, all you have to do to end the box, we just need that end to be parallel to that line. So you can make it really long, you can make it really short. Just draw a line parallel. 
okay? Now the bottom of the box, that line is going to be parallel to the bottom of that box. And it should meet at that corner. Okay. And then we'll just erase those other lines that we don't need. Now you'll see as you start to draw, these um, lines of convergence, it's probably a good idea to just draw them kind of lightly so that it's easy to erase. And there you have it. Okay. So the one thing that gets a little bit tricky for some people, they're not sure where to draw their lines of convergence. So some people I've seen make the mistake that they'll try to draw that line of convergence from this point or from that point. The only thing you have to keep in mind is that our point of view is our eyes are level with the horizon and they're equal with the vanishing point. So if this is you, your eyes, and you're looking at the box, you can only see, you can see the top of the box and the side of the box. So it's from those corners that you're gonna draw your lines of convergence. The same thing with the top. So if you're looking up at a box, you're gonna see the bottom and the side, right? I wouldn't draw this line because I can't see the top of a box if my eyes are below it, okay? Well, what if your box is above and below the horizon line. And we'll draw, I'll draw a little sample one here for you. Okay. I don't want a see-through box. So I'll get rid of that horizon line there. Okay, now we have a box. Our eyes, our viewpoint is in the middle of the box. We're not looking up at it or down at it. It's in the side. So can I see the top of a box if my eyes are below the top? No, I can't see the bottom of a box either. So the only lines I'm gonna draw are these two lines of convergence. So I just line up the corner and go toward that vanishing point. Okay, now I'll end my box. Remember, I'll put my rule of parallel to the side. Draw my line. Now I'll erase the lines that I don't need anymore. And there you have it. Okay. All right guys, so that's the basic idea behind the mechanics of drawing a one point perspective drawing. Now, keep in mind that horizon line I mentioned is the viewer's uh, viewpoint. It's really like the eye level. You can think of it that way, the eye level of the viewer. So as the artist, you can literally change the viewpoint of the, um, of the viewer. So for example, you can take that horizon line and move it way down on your paper. That will give them a different perspective and if you move it way up on the paper. So real quickly, I'm gonna show you a couple examples of how other artists have altered that horizon line to give a slightly different perspective. So let me show you to take a look at that. Okay guys, so this is a great example of a one point perspective drawing in which the artist has chosen to raise the horizon line way up on the paper. So right about there. And you can see 
that now for the viewer, his viewpoint, he's looking down on all the people in the buildings. So that's one way that an artist can kind of change the narrative or the viewpoint of the, uh, of the viewer. So now what he could do instead, he can lower that horizon line down here and then all the buildings could be really tall and big and it would give us a worm's eye view. Likewise, you can move the vanishing point. Right now, this vanishing point is in the middle, but you can move it all the way over to the left, all the way over to the right. And you can kind of just start playing with that to change the perspective of the viewer. I hope this video helps you out. Um, it should serve to just kind of start giving you an introduction into that one point perspective. And once you start playing around with it a little bit and you start to get a real handle on it, you can actually start moving into two point perspective, three point, four point, you can get carried away with five point perspective. It can get really complicated. However, this is a, a, a great starting point. I hope it helps you out. If you have any questions or comments, let me know, reach out to me. And guys, if you like the video, please help me out by giving me a thumbs up. Uh, you can subscribe to my channel. If you'd like to see any of my own artwork, please, I encourage you to stop by edwardcoster.com. The link will be in the uh, comment section. You can also buy artwork from me at Fine Art America, which is also in the comments section. So guys, until next time, have a great rest of your day and I'll see you later. Thanks.